Well, a bunch of gauntlet orders was the minimum, <laughs> minimum encouragement I needed to get myself a P1P from Bamboo Labs. This printer was mentioned to me by Old Fusion Designs and I went down a rabbit hole and I was sold. I've been talking about this printer as well with people like Paper Skeletons 3D. I know Franz Foamworks is thinking of getting one of these. Shout out to them actually for giving me one of their older Ender 3s to kind of help with the farm and putting out a bunch of parts and pieces fast. I've had an Ender 5 Pro for a while and while it is capable of some amazing prints, it requires a lot of tinkering and it's been a struggle off and on. So I'm really, really hoping that this is going to be a heck of a difference. Future Anthony here. Sorry for the printing noise. Save yourself some grief. Check the chapter markers for two of the biggest problems I ran into. Problem one, I didn't actually go through the load procedure for the filament. And the second problem, I didn't have the right build plate selected. There's a drop down. The cold plate was the default. This is the textured PEI plate. If you do those two things, it might save you some time. Also in this video, I don't really talk a whole lot about walls or supports or actually printing. I'm kind of assuming that maybe if you're getting this, it's not your first printer, although it would make an excellent first printer. Just watch some more in-depth reviews on how to actually use it. The process is actually really similar to other printers, except you're using the Bamboo Labs software instead of Cura or Prusa Slicer or something like that. If you don't know what any of that is, you need to start watching some other videos. Or, hey, you can ask me. I do have some problems here in my region of the world on the East Coast with filament and moisture. So I've taken some steps too to do more drying and keep this whole room and area of the house a little less moist. Here's to better printing. Let's check it out. You might say, Anthony, this is a Nerf channel. Why are you doing a video on this when you should be doing other long form reviews? I know. I think once you get to a certain level in this hobby, a printer is kind of the ultimate Nerf accessory. I'm not saying it's not a pain. I'm not saying it's not expensive, but it really can open the door into some cool builds, some cool parts, some cool mods, and just building some of those community blasters that Maybe you can't quite afford to buy assembled. Says the guy only selling assembled right now. Ugh. Right into the first person view. This is packed very well. I know some of you like to see a total unboxing. Not a big unboxing guy, but hey, this was expensive. And we want to be real careful taking this out. Instructions. I will keep those instructions. Bunch of parts and pieces. Let's see if I can do a lift. <laughs> I don't know what kind of view you guys are getting. Well, let's see. Was that everything? That's fun bubble wrap. Now, it's supposed to be very quick to set this printer up. So we're gonna take someone like me. I wouldn't say I'm not technical, I'm a technical guy, but I don't know that I have like a natural talent <laughs> for setting stuff like this up. So I'm sure I'll make some mistakes along the way. It certainly looks cool. All right, let's get this foam out of there. What's that textured plate that I'd read about? You really should definitely go watch some reviews it's really interesting i found it really interesting do i not have snippers scissors are a terrible way to cut things like this yeah this should be quite a jump from a guy still leveling his print bed with <laughs> with a piece of paper let's turn this around that looks good I mean, is this where I should actually read and <laughs> not do anything silly? I'm pausing for a second <laughs> because I'll probably turn it on and lift the build plate to get those out instead of like prying them out of there. Forcing things <laughs> with delicate machinery is not usually a great idea. Neither is usually cutting in and opening boxes with giant scissors. We use what we have. So we have a sample of filament. Excellent. We have the display for this. We have some extra Bowden tube and a whole bunch of tools and parts and little things. And it comes with an extra extruder head, this tube anchor. I don't know the scoop on any of that stuff, so I'm not going to open it 
yet. Let's maybe look at some instructions. So I'm going through the instructions here. I'm going to attach the spool holder. I'll attach the tube anchor. Everything is very well labeled. I thought I was missing some screws for something and I found them right away in these little baggies. I'm gonna do some of these little attachments. I'm not gonna do them on camera because that just sounds long and boring. These are pretty simple. This is attached. It even says top. And I just followed the diagram for which end was which. And I have my little screw holes in there and there, and they were in a bag. Next up, I have my pieces from the tube anchor. Those are going to go through these holes here into these holes, like so. Let's do it. Whoops, I need to attach the tube and I've unpackaged my extra tube. I'm gonna put that back in there. It says to insert these in tightly. I mean, that's in. Woo, I might need both hands for this. Those are inserted. It didn't take much force to get those in. And this is supposed to, I guess, have a little bit of flex here. So I took that roll out of the package. I just flopped it on there. Now it says to insert this into the tube and push until there is resistance. Now we have to unlock the bed. And as you'll see, there are little arrows showing what we need to actually unlock. So we're gonna take out this one this one, and there's one up here. Next up, we're going to attach the screen. And even if you're not super sciencey, that little connector can only fit into that connector one way. So you push this in, push it to the left, and it just locks in. Now to download an app and bind my printer to my account forever. Back in a sec. And while we're waiting, let's uh, plug it in ultimate power all right now that i have the app i am going to hit next you're not a touch screen all right i'm gonna hit next and i have replaced those screws i hope they were the right ones i'm not entirely sure you guys should see this qr code so i will block it okay so i binded my printer to my account and really the screens just look just like this i just had to connect i had to put in my wi-fi password and just click some confirmations. Look at this. Do not remove the protective foam underneath the hotbed until after initial calibration. That's why you don't just force your way through things. I'm glad I stopped on that. I would have had regrets. I'm going to try a first print. We're just gonna run this little self test here. I see if I can take those out now. Oh, I still got a sticker on there. Did I leave any other stickers? Uh oh. Well, I went through the setup. It should be okay. Whoa. That's some pretty intense vibrations. Now, so we can actually do a benchy, we're gonna download Bamboo Studio. Just finishing up my install. Sorry, this is like a little bit kind of choppy, but you know, I'm trying to balance doing this quickly with maybe sharing a little bit about the experience and what it takes to set it up with you guys. After install, you go through some selection screens. I did think it was cool that the Ender 3 was on there, but I'm just gonna use Bamboo Lab software for this printer for now. I went with the default. I did add Sparkle PLA and a couple other profiles. I don't have any of that, but I kind of wonder if uh, the Sparkle will work better with the Galaxy stuff that I have. We will see. Wow, you can tell what a thorough uh, investigator I am before I buy something. I thought that this version of the printer didn't actually have a camera. So I have connected. There was a little bit of a thing to that. I had to come over here and log in with that same Bamboo account. And once I did, it connected okay. I have heard that this printer's Wi-Fi can be a little bit funky. We'll see how it goes. Some would do a benchy, but I have a file I've been meaning to print for a while from Radioactive Designs. This is a spring spacer for a hammer shot. So let's uh, put this in. I increased the walls a few and we're gonna slice it. The other nice thing about this is I don't care what color it is because it's inside and I have white loaded. Let's try actually printing this and seeing how it goes. It does see the printer there, so. It sure is nice to not use a piece of paper. This thing has quite a pre-flight checklist of things that it does. I have heard that you can kind of shorten that up, but for right now, we are just all default to see how it goes. Hey, are we printing? No, we weren't printing. We're still doing stuff. Oh, I guess we're leveling. 
See, this is why I'm doing this. Instead of some really smart person who reviews 3D printers all the time, you have me to not understand anything. So if you don't understand anything, it'll make you feel good. Love that Bamboo Lab Boogie. A lot of the printing time on this small print is just going to be calibrating and set up. Well, in our first test print, nothing's happening. So maybe I didn't feed in the filament properly. I'll have to check this out. So the first time it didn't extrude anything because I hadn't actually loaded the filament. So now I have loaded it. It's, <laughs> it's spurting an awful lot of filament down the chute. Is that normal? I don't know. I'm not sure what's happening, but that can't be normal. I think why that was draining filament forever is I had it on unload. So I needed to actually remove this, I think. I don't know. I'm definitely not up and running in 10 minutes. Right now I am doing a, oh, dirty screen. I'm doing a firmware update and then I'm going to go back and maybe do a Benchy and we'll just see how we do. I think a lot of this so far is just user error on my part. Firmware updated. This time we're actually loading the filament and let's see how our Benchy does. Fun fact, this is the first ever Benchy I'm going to print. Moment of truth. It's wiggling. Will it print this time? That is very fast. It's kind of hard to believe that going that fast it can produce a good print. I guess we'll see, but it looks good so far. Oh, it came off the build plate. Boy, it is. <laughs> I'm having... I'm having a time here. All right, it looks like I might not have had the right plate selected. I need the textured PEI plate, which is what I have here on my printer. I could also slow it down. That is a thing that is recommended, but I kind of want to just try it on high speed for fun. You know, let's try again. This is what I came back to. Look at that Benchy. I am not a Benchy expert by any means, but that seems to be a pretty good looking Benchy. So there you have it. This is amazing, especially with that speed. I'm going to slow it down a little bit for when I'm printing parts for the gauntlet, but I am so excited to be able to print these parts faster. I have a set of orange, a almost a full set of purple, and I am looking forward to mixing and matching some colors and getting those first five orders filled. Can't wait. If you want specs on the Bamboo P1P or stats or anything like that, go watch a real review. I'm just a Nerf nerd who decided to take the plunge and get himself a big printer upgrade, at least big for me. I know that this is kind of the more consumer friendly price version. I'm pretty happy with it. The camera is pretty low quality. It's very, very slow. It doesn't refresh very fast, but hey, I forgot there even was one in this model. I had a couple of hiccups getting it going, but all learning stuff for me, just because I had such a rudimentary printer before. I'm pretty excited about it. Stay tuned and you'll be seeing lots of things printed with this new printer. I hope this was helpful or if nothing else interesting. Sorry, it was so kind of choppy in the middle. I just wanted to film my experience going through it. <laughs> it wasn't really meant to be a full review, but now if you get one, you know how hard it is to set it up. <laughs> All right, talk to you soon, bye-bye. The quality on the fastest setting is better than my slowed down version on the Ender 5. This is amazing. And this flexible magnetic plate is really handy too for popping off the print. Wow. I've been printing for a couple of days and I can confirm the quality is amazing. Every print has succeeded. I am a fan. I'm sure this will go off the rails at some point. I'll have to troubleshoot something, but wow. This is the dream of just like hitting print <laughs> and it prints. It's really, really amazing. Recommend so far. I know some people like to tinker with printing, but for me, printing isn't my hobby. Nerf is my hobby. And I want something that prints easily and reliably so I can use those parts in my other builds. That's why I'm liking this P1P.